Hey guys, did you know that for every Christmas tree harvested, tree farmers plant one to three seedlings to replace that tree to make sure there's enough trees to go around? And in 2012, 46 million tree seedlings were planted in fields across America? Think about that. Taking the gravel screen over to the Assover tree kettle field, then we're gonna gravel some screen or screen some gravel as I should say After that we're gonna take the tractor over to the cow wash and give the John Deere a little tractor bath because she's pretty dirty uh, And then we're gonna reflect a little bit on some Cornville history and Memorial Day weekend Don't forget to like and subscribe hit the button down below hit that little button right over here if you want leave a comment I love to read them yeah there's my pitch so stick around we'll get to work I think that that was a success for the uh, first go at the gravel screen. A couple of mistakes that I picked up on right off the bat. I put the screen down backwards so I started at the top and I went to the bottom which allowed for uh, rocks and things to, to peel up under and then fall into the good gravels. It's a little flimsy but all in all I think it's good. It's standing up uh, fairly well. The screen is, is too flimsy and I have to find some thicker screen. Seem to be producing some really good uh, one inch gravel uh, that we're going to use for the driveway here. So that's all the junk that I weeded out and then this is the uh, the finds that we screened out and this is going to be the good gravel. So as you can see that's going to make for a nice surface, it's going to make for a really nice uh, uh, gravel driveway. Notice how I put that chicken wire on backwards and, and it just everything's falling right through. I had to go and, and take it out by hand. Buds are starting to look really good. This is going to be a nice tree. Uh, we do have some trouble. This guy, I don't know. I'm a little nervous. Uh, he's going to struggle. I think I'm going to need to get some fertilizer on him or something. He worries me. I'm going to have a good season, I think. I hope. I pray.
my first time to Butler's self-service bay and I've got to say that I will be back. Uh, that was very helpful. It was reasonable. It was about $11.50 to wash the tractor, which is uh, not an easy thing to do. Lots of nooks and crannies. That's probably the first time it's been washed since I bought it uh, in 2018. And I'm very happy with the results. This is Fog Cemetery. It's one of the older cemeteries in Cornville. It's Memorial Day weekend, so all the flags are out for the veterans who have served and have lived and been buried in Cornville. There is a Revolutionary War soldier that is buried here. His name was Biley Smith. Let's go see if we can find his headstone. So this is Biley Smith's headstone. I dare say it is not original. Mr. Smith was in the New Hampshire militia and he moved to Maine after the war. From what we can tell, he is one of six Cornwall residents who served in the Revolutionary War. Moses Cass, Samuel Collins, Samuel Fogg, Noah March, Enoch Page, and Mr. Smith. child I belonged to 4-H here and one of our civic projects was to put the flags out uh, for Memorial Day weekend. And I remember it being a very special time we got to go around to all the uh, cemeteries and find the veteran stones. Uh, Mr. Smith was, was really exciting because he was a Revolutionary War soldier. I think that's what's special about Cornville and, and what's special about these places is that people came from away and then they made their homesteads here and they worked the land and they, they, they lived and, and then they died. In 1932, it was decided that the town needed a World War I memorial. A large rock was found on the farm of Lee Kelly and he, along with a group of men with four pair of horses, moved and set the rock in front of the town hall and a tablet made for the same. The moving and setting cost $28.24 and the bronze tablet cost $55. This is according to Some Cornville History by Lawrence Anderson. Headstone of my grandparents, Willis and Helen Quinn. My grandfather Willis served in the United States Army Air Corps in World War II, one of five brothers that served during World War II from the Quinn family. My grandmother can track her roots in Cornville back five generations. On the other side of my family, my grandfather Kenneth Martin served in the United States Navy during World War II as an underwater demolition team member, a Navy frogman. This is why this place is so special to me, because my roots are, are deeply set here in Cornville. Just like every other New England town, we have history and we have helped shape the land to what it is today. And it is for that reason why I'd rather feel bad in Maine than feel good anywhere else. Durgo, my friends, I'll see you soon.